Hey everyone, so I didn't want to do two consecutive videos covering wellness, but my computer crashed last week after I finished a script for another video, and I want to profile the wellness girls before Pittsburgh Pro takes place on the April 30th. So today's video is going to introduce the pros as best I can. I figure I owe them some exposure after using their pictures from my previous video. And a lot of the ones from Brazil can be difficult to extract info from since their profiles are in Portuguese and I have to rely on online translators. Plus, there's a lot of bikini girls switching classes, so it's kind of like the Wild West at the moment, and there's going to be people I miss. So what I find interesting about wellness is that there's two conferences of athletes that won't interact much until the Olympia like you see in professional sports. It has been thriving outside the IFBB down in South America for years now. So the Brazilian competitors are conditioned as to what needs to be done, and most already competed late last year to sort out a pecking order. Pittsburgh is going to be huge, as the winner will unquestionably be one of the favorites going into the O. Right now it looks like there's going to be over 20 competitors, so I apologize for not covering everybody. Also, anyone who wins will be covered in a video leading up to the Olympia later this year. So for today's video, I'm going to cover who I think are currently the frontrunners to compete in and win this year's Olympia and wellness. <laughs> I wanted to start things off with someone people might have forgotten about. Cassia Morales nearly won the Tampa Pro last year, so I figured she was worth mentioning. She seems to have struggled with some things last year, but is still lurking in the shadows. I believe she is Puerto Rican, but lives and trains in California. She has such a small frame, it doesn't take much for her to look pretty impressive. She's always been known for a pretty infamous set of abs, which seem to be a common theme in this division. She also seems to be pursuing a career in real estate, so you might not see her again this season, but look out for her if you do. I believe Renee Harshi turned pro and competed in bikini long before she switched to wellness last year. And it seems to be a good call as she went on to win Tampa, but unfortunately the IFBB wasn't ready to have wellness at that year's Olympia. So in a sense, you could crown her as an IFBB wellness champion, but she's going to face a much more difficult field in Pittsburgh. In fact, I'm not even sure she's favored to win it, and I don't think she's even in the conversation as much as she necessarily should be. So it's weird calling her a dark horse when she's at least the highest ranked wellness girl in the US at the moment, but I included her on this list because she's absolutely a force going into Pittsburgh, and nobody should be too surprised if she manages to eke out a win. Dr. Sunny Andrews, on the other hand, seems to be the most talked about wellness girl in the US. The biggest shame with her is that everybody will probably focus on her winning the genetic lottery and overlook her work ethic, but I will point out that it takes a combination of smarts and diligence to get where she is today. Regardless of what she's been gifted, her work ethic is nothing short of extraordinary. She's finished medical school and is currently in her surgery residency, yet has still found time to train, diet, turn pro, and prepare for the Pittsburgh Pro. And you thought your resume and time management skills were impressive? Anyway, she's competing in Pittsburgh in a couple weeks and is absolutely one of the favorites going in. Yurishna Ayala was born and raised in Puerto Rico and is probably the most well-known girl on this list. She has over 2 million followers on Instagram. And this is her second go-around at a career in the IFBB. She turned pro in 2013 in bikini and then went on to compete in 12 pro shows, but was never able to place in the top five. So it looked like she had peaked and hung things up in 2015 as a second or third tier bikini pro. But last year it seems some people were able to convince her to try wellness, and it's pretty much a given she's going to fare much better here, as she seemed too muscular for bikini. Right now I think of her as a Juliana Malacarni of wellness, who was too muscular for figure and was never able to do too well until physique started and then subsequently became the standard bearer. It's going to be interesting to see if Yurishna goes down a similar path. Pretty much the whole wellness world is watching her right now just to see how she does in Pittsburgh. Next up are the Brazilian girls, who definitely have a leg up on everyone else because they've been doing this for a few years now. Susana Rodriguez was the first IFBB wellness pro, so she's already ingrained in the wellness hall of fame. 
Concurrently, I expect her to be near the top for a bit as she's probably knocking on the front door of the tier 1 competitors. She competed at the Muscle Contest Nationals and did very well, which shouldn't be overlooked as it's been the deepest field we've seen so far. She's second in the point standings right now, so I think she'll qualify for the Olympia one way or the other. She's just going to have to compete again to get there. I'm not sure what Juju Buffett means, but it's a pretty fun word to say nonetheless. Anywho, I think Juliana Esteso might have the closest thing to a centaur-like physique people were expecting to see. And looking at these picks, you'll see why, as her quads are simply insane. I'm not sure if she'll be marked off slightly for being a tad too bottom heavy, but I would be very surprised if she's not at the Olympia this year. She's from Brazil, but resides in France. Going through her Instagram, you'll see she speaks three different languages very fluently, so she's definitely got some brain power to go with those thunder thighs. Competitively, she nearly won the Europa in Spain last year, and it looks like she's planning to compete again in July, which shows she put that brain to work since Pittsburgh is going to be a crapshoot, and there's a three-week period in July containing three wellness competitions. So we'll get a better idea where she stands in three months from now. So as of recording this video, Maria Paulette is from Spain and is currently the only non-Brazilian girl qualified for the Olympia. I wasn't sure why she was initially, but I believe they gave the top two placings at the Romania Muscle Fest an invite, which makes sense as the Europeans normally have less opportunities to qualify than those in the Western Hemisphere. And this was exacerbated more than ever last year with all the travel restrictions going on. It seems she had a similar background to Yurishna, as she was one of those bikini competitors that just couldn't quite jump into the top tier, but seamlessly did so after switching to wellness. I'm not sure if we'll see her again on stage before the Olympia. Giselle Mashadu might have the longest shelf life of anyone on this list, as she's only been competing for a couple years now. Plus, I believe she's one of the younger girls here as well. Her rise last year was meteoric, so many people might have missed it. She didn't turn pro in Brazil, instead she elected to fly out to Romania. Once there, she won her pro card on a Saturday and then the pro show on Sunday. So she was one of three people to turn pro and qualify for the Olympia in a week span last year. The Romania Muscle Fest wasn't the most stacked show, but there were some big names in it. So unless she competes again before the O, it's going to be pretty hard to gauge where she currently sits. From what I gathered before I started making this video, Angela Borges is your frontrunner for the Olympia crown. She is far more experienced than anyone else I could find. Her resume is jaw-dropping for a division still in its infant stage. She's won over 50 contests. Initially, it looked like she was reluctant to come to the IFBB, but something seems to have changed her mind. She has already proven that she's the real deal when she won the Europa Pro in Spain last year. One thing I've noticed with her is she absolutely loves competing and is not afraid to risk her standing by placing in the smaller shows. And just about anyone talking about wellness considers her the person to beat right now. However, what not many people realize is that there was a contest in Brazil known as the Muscle Contest National last November that Angela didn't win. Another Brazilian girl by the name of Francielle Matos beat Borges this season. At first I wasn't sure how much to read into this. Was the IFBB sending a message to Borges to stop competing and let the other competitors qualify for the Olympia since she was already qualified? Was she simply off on that day? Or is Matos simply slightly better than her? I'm not sure we'll find out until the Olympia, but looking at the picture, she's very, very good and has Richard Panayan, who's probably the top coach in South America at the moment, in her corner. And the more I thought about it, the less I think it was a shot across Angela's bow, as they seem to be qualifying the top two for most shows, and they need to get some of these Brazilian girls competing around the U.S. to drum up interest and give a sense of what the division is about. So we'll have to see how the rest of the season plays out, but it's very likely Matos is going to be the favorite going in. Which I think is a good thing, because I said it in my prior video, the uncertainty of this thing is one of the main selling points, and as has been illustrated in just three wellness contests so far, anything can happen here. One of the questions on everyone's mind is if the American girls are going to be able to hang with the Brazilians. It's a good question, and in the long run I don't think there's any doubt. It's just the short term that things could prove dicey, simply because the culture down there has had so much more time to iron things out 
when many in the U.S. are still trying to digest how exactly to prepare. But I see it becoming popular enough that it will attract needed talent. And I still feel that we're in the calm before the storm for this thing. It's going to drum up a lot of interest when showcased at a huge expo like the Arnold or the Olympia. So that's all I got for this video everyone. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like, hit that subscribe, let me know in the comments any type of videos you'd like to see in the future. Until next time, stay safe, good luck, and thanks for watching.